Hello, and welcome to a new series, this time focused on the moon. Please subscribe to the channel, share this video and any within the series with your friends and loved ones. Comment beneath, like the video, and turn on the notification bell so you can hear when I release new things. Please send me an email if you would like to have a personal reading of your birth chart. This is my great passion and I love doing it. So thank you so much for tuning in. It brings me so much joy to share this amazing art science with you during this new Aquarian age that we're in. The moon is at home in Cancer and at home in the fourth house. So these are themes of family, mother, home, the heart, emotions. So I hope you enjoy this exploration. <laughs> Good morning everyone and welcome, welcome to the channel, welcome to the Ineffable Else and welcome to the next in the series of planetary celestial body placements that we're going to explore. The first planet we looked at was Saturn and I did this for a reason. Saturn is about control, self-autonomy, structure, boundaries, developing healthy boundaries and governing the self. The moon is about softness and softening and self-care and love and the mother, where Saturn was the father. As the moon is so soft, it can sometimes be a, it can sometimes be the place we would prefer to crawl into and be safe. And I think it's a, an important thing not to escape from the challenges of life and instead address the moon from a more stable place because the moon is the thing that shows us that we can change. It shows us the inevitability of change and it teaches us lessons about... Look at the weather, it was pouring down with rain this morning and now it's almost sunny, I see blue sky. So I will be going through the moon in all the different, different signs and houses and it's going to be really, really fun. And I first want to make an introduction to the moon to explain a bit about some of the features that it has and some of the qualities that you can expect with the moon, regardless of the placement. So of course, fundamentally, the moon is associated with the emotions because emotions are moving all the time, just as water is. And we are 70% water, 75% water. So we are vibratory, water beings very influenced by our surroundings the moon is about empathy and how we feel whereas capricorn and saturn is about rigidity and structure and control and limitations cancer finds it difficult to do that which is why cancer being the home of the moon is very concerned with creating a nest creating a home creating a shell creating something to try and keep out the, the big nasties. And the key with the moon is to learn to integrate all of this, this, all of the emotions, good and bad, and not hold on to any of them. And know that the emotion is not a process that we go through. To be an emotional being is to be a human being. And the majority of the planet are very emotionally repressed. We are not okay with emotions. As a collective, we find them volatile, scary and dangerous. We also assume that they will all be very negative. If they're positive, we try to hold on to them and then they stop being positive because they are so laced with addiction and fear. So all that being said, wonderful introduction. The moon is the entry point for most people with astrology after maybe going through a sun sign because you, you for a sun sign astrology, you only need to know your date of birth. Um, for the moon, you can also find that out by the date of birth and the ascendant you really need your, your time. So the moon is also the most accessible because it's a thing that we can see very closely. We see it change through its phases. And obviously in the past, it was extremely more prominent in our lives without um, electric lighting. We could see it every day. Now that I live in nature and I turn off all electrics in the nighttime, I can 
feel the influence of the moon far more strong and I can also notice that it is like a sun in the nighttime sky. It blocks out all of the other stars when the moon is out. So it's an incredibly powerful thing. And if you were born in the nighttime, you're possibly much more aligned with your moon sign than your sun sign. I can certainly relate to this being a night, a night, being born at night when the moon was waxing, so almost full. It's a very strong presence in the sky. And just if you've ever uh, lived a month observing a moon cycle and, and living with no electric light and just living by the light of the moon, then you feel its power and you feel the gratitude when it's there and also when it's not there. So then you can sleep <laughs> much more easily. So the word moon, this relates to menstrual, Monday, month, the 28 days that we feel, the very structure of time that we have is relating to the moon and its cycle. And this is why we can see it as the balancing force from Saturn. Capricorn, home of Saturn on one axis. On the other axis, the moon, Cancer. The mother, maternal, the breasts, the bosom, as opposed to Capricorn, the father, structure, the bones, the container for all of that. This is the so soft and fleshy part of us. This is very, very tender. And what are the breasts? Well, the breasts are also are sustenance. They offer food to children. They are close to the heart. They're expressing from this direction. If you look at a man and a woman to create a kind of polar polarity to make energy flow, man's penis is the is the active force coming out from the sacral chakra and the women's breasts are coming out from the heart chakra, so they create this, this circular flow. Like when you have magnets. In terms of astrology and science, it is the one celestial body that we can really see affects human beings. It's the one... It, the other planets, I know from, from personal experience that they do affect our lives, but if you're not uh, paying attention and if we're not sensitive enough as, as humans yet, we don't feel it. But no matter what, we feel the moon. More arrests happen on Friday nights when there's a full moon than on any other night of the year. This is a fact. And it affects the level of the sea. The I, I remember putting my tent um, down on a beach on a lovely new moon night and that same beach on the full moon night was chaotic with the waves not only coming further up the beach but coming further up and licking up the side of the of the cliff and then going further out back into the ocean than I'd ever seen it was the contrast and the the um, the shake up that was really phenomenal to me to see and as humans, really, when you look at the size of the sun in the sky and you look at the size of the moon in the sky, they are equal, they are the same. Given that the moon is much closer and the sun is further away, from our perspective, they look the same, they have the same relevance. So with this planet, we always are asked to look at our relationship with mother. And this doesn't just mean your biological mother, this can mean mother nature, this can mean the government, you think about the, the much more left-wing side of the government that just wants to, um, that just provides uh, sustenance and food. We, all might, we call it the nanny state, you know, the, the teat of, of the government. You know, these, these are the two archetypes of the, of, you can almost think of the left wing and the right wing as, as the moon and Saturn. And we need to find a place in the middle where we're not completely dependent and ruled by emotion, which are fleeting and are not us. There's something going through us. It's, it's very strange if we have an emotion coming through us for me to say, I am joy Ooh. or I am suffering. It's interesting in the English language that we say, I am hungry. We identify with these feelings, not as in Spanish, I have hunger, <laughs> something I have, I have fear. It means it, you know, I have a mask in my hand. Oh, now I don't. 
it leaves. We have a lot of wounding around the mother. We have a lot of wounding around the breasts. We have a lot of breast cancer. And the other thing is, say for example, you are covered in mud and you then identify with the mud, like, I am mud, that's me. Instead of just going and washing it, and then it just leaves you. And this is the power of water. And this is why we can't ever identify with anything we... anything. You know, I could make a video like this and feel satisfied that ha about having made it, but there's no lasting joy because there's another one to be made and the joy comes in the actual making of the videos the joy of the process not the identification with i am the ineffable else and i do this and that makes me valid and that makes me real no it's self-evident so when you're looking at your moon you look at whether it was full or waxing gibbous um, crescent look at the 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 phase it was in when you were born because that will also have an influence on your your perspective on the world and your outlook you know and, and I always think about look at how much light was in your vicinity when you were when you were born were you born in high June in the wee hours you know 4 a.m. as the sun was rising and then you've got a whole huge uh, 15 hour day ahead of you with full sun or were you born in the, you know, 8 p.m. in the dead of winter and you've got another, you know, 12 hours all the way till the sun rises, you know? When we're that young, the time is different, you know? Time is so much more crucial and, and laden with messages. So what is our perspective? Are we more optimistic naturally? Are we more glass half full or glass half empty? The point, and it, it makes me laugh that there are so many groups that say, you know, on Facebook, cancer only, Virgo only, you know, you, you can't join unless your son is in this sign. And I just want to point out the fact that we are much more than our sun sign. And we are also really affected by what's happening now. None more than the moon. The moon is constantly being, it, the moon changes every two days and is constantly affecting us. So it's important to notice how we feel in different moon phases and then we'll feel more our moon sign at those different points. The other point with the moon is that it is circular and spiraling. If you think of a crab, it doesn't move in a straight line. It moves side to side to side to side. It's, it's unsure of itself. This is where doubt resides. But this can be a healthy doubt if you're really feeling into your environment and feeling the feedback that you're getting before you then make a decision. And this is the thing with the moon, where Capricorn is the respecter of time and does things on time and structures itself by time. This is something much more of a man-made time, whereas with the moon, this is a natural time. This is aligning with everything being born at its correct moment. I saw somebody else was saying how they were born premature and they're, therefore they're in the wrong sign. And it's no, no, everything is meant to be. Everything is exactly aligned with divine order. Our emotional bodies are a very funny concept to me. And I understand and agree with Eckhart Tolle when he talks about the pain body. Because it's extremely painful to hold on to an emotion. It's shaking, trembling, and you see tension in the neck. And when you start uh, exploring your own body through yoga, you realize, wow, I've been holding that there. And then it's, it's a locked muscle. It's um, a, a tumor. It's something that, that should never have been there because it could just be let go. But we weren't given that blessing as children because we were trained not to express ourselves. And and then this makes me laugh then when people say, well, no, but toddlers do express themselves. Children do express themselves and they cry. But many times that's not even from a real place. That's crying for a biscuit because then I get the biscuit and then I can suppress the emotion. Or it's crying um, in, in it as well. Also when we're younger, yes, we do express much more genuine emotion very easily. And up to the age of about three, that's, that is naturally happening. But then after that, we learn behavior. We learn 
do use our emotions um, and turn on a tap um, and to manipulate our environment, you know. However, this isn't the fault of the three-year-old. This is just how we've been taught to be and how our parents were taught to be, is to, uh, to get our emotional needs met, to get our... Um, to, to find some comfort, to find some kind of nest and home and safe place, but through manipulation and through trying to plug up and release emotions uh, that were never meant to be stored. Everything was supposed to just flow through us. And then we could just speak from a very honest and natural place about what we desire and what we need. But many times we don't feel that we are entitled to ask for what we really want. We don't feel that we are allowed to express how we really deeply feel. So instead we many times have an overlay and we create drama and we create circumstances and we go into the mind and we stop feeling, we stop feeling. We maybe express an emotion, but we're not feeling it. It's much more of a tension, much more of a And, and sometimes it's just a, a total build up and build up after repressing for so long and then it comes out in an explosion which is then judged. So the key with the moon is to stop judging and to really appreciate it for what it is and what it teaches us and the movement that it provides so we're not stuck. I always see within the archetype of cancer the, the highest potential for for heart expansion and just really understanding, you know, that innate mother's love. And then also the total um, denial of responsibility and falling into a very codependent and just, just being ruled by the emotions and having no no clue how to progress and feeling very lost. You know, it's always that thing, that whoever has the highest potential for something also has its opposite inherent within that. And, you know, with the, with the fourth and the tenth house, it's about how much we can parent ourselves, how much of a parent can we be to ourselves. So as with all these videos, I hope that you can watch them and just see how they sit with you. See what triggers you. See where you switch off. See where you stop listening. Wait, what was that? What was that that was said that I've tried to wash over? Um, something very interesting with the mind in that it can just pretend it hasn't heard something. It can just brush something completely aside. And I had an interesting experience with one of my students who's a child telling me about their hay fever. And I said three times, yes, I had hay fever when I was younger and I never thought I would get over it. And now I haven't had it for three years and I'm, and I'm clean and it's amazing. And she said, I hate it, I just hate it. I can't stop itching, I can't stop sneezing. And yeah. But you know, I'm, I'm a living example that you can get through it and it will, it will end and it will change. And she said, yeah, I just don't believe any, I, I, don't, I don't think I will ever be able to enjoy nature and ever. And you could see it was just not, it was, it was like talking to, to glass, like it just wasn't able to go in. And then I remembered being her age and having the same things come out of my mouth and many times people telling me that I would get over it and I never believed it. So it's very curious to watch how we take in any information as to whether or not we actually take it in, whether or not it's just not relevant or if we are actually resisting hearing something that could even benefit us, you never know. But often we don't believe it and often uh, if we don't want to hear something it's because we feel our identity is being threatened. And certainly there was an identity there in suffering and in ha having hay fever and being an allergic person was an identity. And sometimes we prefer to feel something, even if it's terrible, 
than feel we are nothing and have no name to put to ourselves. But that's the beginning of liberation. So as with all of the planets and with all of the astrological videos that I make, this is just a stepping stone towards transcending these archetypes. This is not a, this is a stopgap. It's not a, I am an Aries moon, therefore I'm volatile and impulsive and I can't, I can't handle myself. <laughs> no, it's just a reflection. Ah, I have these tendencies and these are the areas I need to focus on. And also, oh, that's what that's all about and then it puts your whole life into focus. And this is why I feel like I look at astrology a bit different from many of the videos that I see online, which are just trying to give us some kind of, just to give us another, another ego really, to give us a spiritual ego instead of one that's um, created just through trauma. But it's all part of the process, I suppose. Thank you for joining me here on this beautiful, beautiful spring day. It's really, really nice. And yeah, I will crack on with the, the moon videos soon. I'll be releasing them. And also creating a Patreon because I want to create a catalogue with all of these videos for you to enjoy. But I, I also want to create a course where I can show you how to apply this to your own chart. Because you can't look at something you can't understand how a car works just by looking at one cog, by looking at one set of gears. You need to put it all together to create the totality. Just having the ingredients doesn't make the curry. You need someone to give you a recipe. And that is what learning to look at your own birth chart and really as... as you know you better than anyone else so really being able to read your own birth chart is the key and we've never been able to do this before now it it's astonishing to me the the time that we live in where in the past we didn't know when we were born we didn't have the the means to calculate the stars um, this was a privilege only for men really 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 rich men who were in court and paid to be astrologers now we can type in some information into an application or into a website and find out our birth chart just like that like this is uh, this is the golden age of astrology so I'm really really glad to be at the forefront of this coming forward so thank you for being here and thank you for diving in the waters are deep.